Well, good afternoon. My name's Callum Lycan and I'm Edinburgh's storyteller. Today we're in John Knox House at the Scottish Storytelling Centre because outside is the Edinburgh Fringe. Absolute chaos and pandemonium, but one of the greatest, funnest places to be in Edinburgh at any time. So welcome one and all to Scotland, welcome to Edinburgh, and welcome to August, the Edinburgh Fringe. A long time ago, there was a traveller and his life was about the open air. He loved being outside, so every day he took the opportunity to work, to live, to walk. Now he'd just finished in a village doing some odd jobs and the sun was high in the sky. And he thought to himself, if I go now, I can find a new village and settle down and tomorrow I'll be ready to work. So he decides to set off into the countryside and it is glorious. The sun on his head, the earth under his feet and the birds and bees singing their song. And our traveller gets lost. Not lost in direction, but just lost in the beauty of the world. And before he realises it, well, the sun, that glorious sun, starting to dip. And that's when he realises he's, he's been daydreaming. He's just been enjoying himself, so he now needs to find a little place to sleep. And it just so happens, just over a few hills, he spies what looks like a few chimneys and rooftops. Perfect. He's never been there, he's never even knew there was a village, so this makes it even more fun. So his feet direct him, and soon enough, he's stepping into the village. And that's when he has a few niggles and a few doubts. Because all of a sudden, as he walks into this village, he's looking around, and he's looking at the thatch. It's perfect. He's looking at all the paintwork, and there's not a single chip. The gardens are pristine. And our traveller's starting to worry, is there anything he could even do here? But he's here now, <clears throat> you've got to try. So he goes up to one of the doors and he knocks. And what greets him is the most unexpected thing. In Scotland, we have a wee uh, saying that every stranger is a friend you don't know yet. <clears throat> and in the old culture, you would welcome a stranger and sit them by your fire. Maybe give them a wee dram and have a chat. So can you imagine when he knocks on the door and it's answered with, Get away! We didn't want you here! Be gone! And our traveller's just in shock. He's never had a reception like this. But you know what? Everyone's entitled to a bad day. So he thinks I'll try the next door, and again, when he knocks, it's get out our village. We don't want your type here, be gone. Never in all his days has he had this, but okay, third time lucky. So he goes and he knocks on that door, and again, he's given exactly the same response. And our traveler, he just doesn't know what to do. This has never happened. So, he just thinks it's time to give up. I'll go to the wee forest now, make a wee bed and settle down for the night. So he starts to walk out of the village, but as he does, he just happens to look in and he sees in the heart of the village is a beautiful big townhouse. It looks like it's got a lot of money. It looks like quite a big home, which means there might be some odd jobs. And in his head, he thinks, you know what? One, one last chance. Let's, let's just try one last time. So he goes and he knocks on the door. And as soon as it's opened, he wishes he hadn't. Because what opens that door is a right old, sour faced wee wifey. And her tongue is filled with venom and spite. She gives him such a tongue lashing, he's almost bent backwards with it. Now, because this is a, a lovely audience, it is early in the day, I am not going to tell you any of the words that were used against that traveller. I like to be polite in these sessions. But this poor traveller, he's just, he's never had this in his days. He can't even say anything, he just shakes his head and starts to walk away. But as he walks away, a little bit of mischief kicks in. He starts to think about how vile and nasty these people are. How can they treat a stranger this way? I'm going to have some fun. 
And with that, he spins back round to the wee wifey. Madam, you're perfectly right. I didn't actually come for odd jobs. I didn't come to work or even eat or sleep. You know, I just happened to be passing the village and I, I thought I'd ask a wee favour. You see, I've got my pot here and I just need some water. Because on the way into the village, I found this perfectly good stone. And I fancy making some soup. Now, on this, the wee wifey double checked. Where, where did you say? I just need some water because I found this stone and I want to make some soup. And this wee wife is one of these creatures that she doesn't even pass the opportunity to humiliate someone. She loves making people look foolish. So before he can even move, it's grabbed from his hand. She's ran indoors to fill it. She wants to make a fool of this man. And he, she comes back out with a pot full of water and he's already got a wee fire going. So he sits his pot on the fire and he waits. He waits for a few minutes until steam starts to rise. He waits for a few minutes until the water starts to bubble and boil and then he takes his stone and he drops it in. And he waits. And he waits until the steam starts to rise, until the water starts to bubble, and then, oh yes, oh, oh, that, oh, that smells great, oh, this, this is going to be the greatest pot of soup I've ever made. He takes a wee spoon and he stirs it, and, oh, can I try something? No, you <laughs> oh, this soup is tremendous. Oh, a couple more minutes and that will be ready. Actually, no, no, something's missing. Something's not right with this soup. Salt. If I just had a wee bit of salt, this soup would be fantastic. Now, her wee wifey is just standing here looking a bit puzzled, but she's thinking, I, 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 I've got some salt. And before she knows what she's doing, she's running and she's got a wee pinch of salt, and in it goes to the pot. And he stirs it, and he smells it, oh, fantastic. He tastes it, oh, perfect. That soup, that's, that's the best I've ever made. Now, the whole village is starting to hear about this man making soup. And they all now come out, and there they are surrounding him, and there's murmurs. Oh my, uh, this fella says he's making a <coughs> soup from a, a stone, and someone over here's giving it. I know, I'm, I'm watching it bubble and boil. And now our traveller knows he's got them. Hook, line, and sinker. He knows they're there. Ah, oh, just, I, I, my belly's rumbling. Couple more minutes, and this soup will be ready. <sighs> you know, this is one of the best pots I've made, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. It's just a shame because, you know what, there's only one thing that would make this soup better. If only I had some... What do you like in your soup? Onions. Let's see if I had some onions. Just a couple of onions would make this, and before he knows it, somebody back here is going, oh, I've got some onions. And they run off and get a couple of onions and they go in the soup. And then... What are you like in your soup back there? Carrots. Carrots. Somebody runs off and gets carrots. What do you like in your soup? Potatoes. Potatoes. And before he knows it, there's carrots, there's onions, potatoes that he's stirring and smelling. Oh, oh. You know, if only I had some... Beans. Beans. Oh, beans would make this soup brilliant. And people are running back and forward. Sir, what do you like in your soup? Uh... Herbs. Herb, herbs, excellent. Some herbs, this is, the, I'm getting worried. Every day it's a vegetarian soup. <laughs> <laughs> Could somebody save me? Chicken! Hey, chicken! <laughs> and all of a sudden, all these ingredients are getting thrown his way just as he mentions them. And before their eyes, there's the villagers. Their jaws are on the ground because they're looking at a huge bubbling pot 
of soup that's been made from a stone. And they can't believe it. But our traveller, he's not a bad man. So he asks them, go get a wee bowl. He says, go get yourselves a wee bowl and we'll have some. And he, he does. He dishes out a bit of soup to everyone. And everybody takes their soup and they love it. This is the greatest soup they've ever tasted. And once that pot's empty, he takes it and he gives it a wee rinse. And he grabs his stone and he gives it a wee clean. And then he looks at all the villagers and he thinks, maybe I should get out of here. <laughs> But just as he's about to leave, he just thinks, one last thing. And he finds that wee sewer-faced wife and he walks up to her. <coughs> and he says, I want you to have this. And he hands her the stone. And he says, that stone, I reckon, has got another good ten stalks left in it. <laughs> and with that, our traveller turns round and walks out of the village, never to be seen again. Now you might be wondering, that's a bit of a strange story to start any session with. But it is in fact a true story. You see, to this day there's a wee village up north that still makes some award-winning soup. I was there about three months ago and I tasted their soup and I will say it is exquisite. And I badgered and pestered and begged to know what their secret was until they finally admitted that to this day that little village are still making the finest soup in Scotland using nothing more than the simple stock of a stone. Now, it wouldn't be Scotland without talking a wee bit about some of the things about Scotland. We have so many wonderful things. We have haggis. Oh, wait till you taste the haggis. We have kilts, such as my men like myself. And of course, probably one of the most favourite things about Scotland Whiskey. Whiskey is something if you visit, you'll need to experience. And I can take you around and tell you about whiskey and introduce you to some of the finest single malts this country has to offer. Whether it's smoky, whether it's salty, or whether it's sweet to your palate, I can find your whiskey to suit. And we'll sit, we'll drink whiskey, and we'll spin some stories and have a great time in the Cayley culture that is Scotland. So welcome to the Kickstarter campaign for the audio trip. And you guys can be involved in this. This is an opportunity for you to come along to meet the 25 storytellers and be part of this exciting project. So please have a look at it and put something towards it so we can all bring you this wonderful opportunity that when you're traveling the world, you get to listen to me and 24 of my wonderful storytelling friends as you voyage around our cities and the lands that we love. <laughs>